Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Ruston Association's election information session for 2016. I'm Kate Fulkerson, CEO for the association, and I'm honored to help out our elections committee in providing you information about the upcoming election and what you can expect in running for the board of directors and what it's like to be a board of director. In the uh, audience with us this evening is Ed Robichaud. He's our chair of the elections committee, so he can help answer any questions that you have, as well as our board president, Ellen Graves. Uh, we also have one of our board directors from Lake Ann Tall Oaks and our board secretary, E. Thompson, for tonight. So thank you all. As well as Danielle LaRosa, who's sitting on the wrong side of the room. You <laughs> couldn't see where she was. Uh, but she is with our North, she's in our North Point district director as well. So I'm glad that you all are here. And if you have any, any questions that if people come up with, you can help fill in the blanks. This is intended to give an overview of what, uh, what to be expecting as you're running for a board director seat and what that is like. So we're going to cover a few things this evening. General introductions, I've given a couple of introductions, so I'm going to ask those who I haven't announced yet to do that in a moment. Um, I'm going to talk about board members, duties, responsibilities, election materials, where to find information and answer any questions that you might have. So let's go over some of the uh, board member duties and responsibilities. One of the things that's important to understand is that Reston Association is uh, comprised of a nine-member board of directors. Uh, the board of directors are set out in the association's deed. There are four director seats or district director seats. Lake Ann Tall Oaks, Hunters Woods Dogwood, South Lakes, and the North Point director seat. There are four at-large seats. Those at-large seats cover the entire team of Resta. The district seats, and I'm unfortunately this doesn't have the proper pointer for me to highlight it, but often the right hand corner is Lake Ann Tall Oaks, right next to above that in the, on the left hand upper side is the North Point District, down below that is the Hunters Woods Dogwood District, and then the last is the South Lakes District. The Ninth seat on the board of directors is the apartment owner's seat. That means that the owners of the apartment complexes that fall within the rest of master plan elect their own representative. That happens to be filled right now by Ellen Graves, our board president. So she is serving in that capacity. We have three seats open this, for this uh, cycle. Uh, the seats are for a three-year term. We have the Lake Ann Tall Oaks position, the North Point position, and an at-large position open. The district positions, Hunters Woods, I'm sorry, uh, Lake Ann Tall Oaks or the North Point, you do need to be a resident of that district in order to run for those seats and to sit on the board of directors. So you cannot live in a property that is going to go back in the Hunters Woods Dogwood district and run for a seat in either North Point or Lake Ann Tall Oaks. You can own a property in the Hunters Woods Dogwood District, but must reside in one of those two districts up there. So that is so that's an that's an important distinction on that. Reston Association is unique. Unlike typical nonprofit boards requiring their board of directors to raise funds, that's not what you have to do with the Reston Association. The reason for that is that our annual assessment takes care of, generally takes care of the operational needs. We do have a separate fundraising arm with a separate board called Friends of Reston that we utilize to get funding for a wide variety of different things from capital project improvements, recreational improvements to uh, camp scholarships. So that is the, a differentiator for Reston Association boards. You don't have to fundraise for that. One of the unique parts, though, about being a community association and having a nonprofit board is that it is not a small group of people that the board of directors sets policy for. It is not only for a community of almost 60,000, but it is also for a staff upwards of 300 seasonal employees in the off season with about 90, a little over 90 full-time, part-time employees year round. So it's a very large organization. Differences? Don't have to fundraise for it necessarily, but you have a very large organization to run at the same time for the board. 
directors. One of the most important things to remember as a board duty and responsibility is that you need to fulfill the purposes of the association which are spelled out in the association's deed and the policies of the association which are spelled out in the bylaws. There's also a strategic plan that the association puts together, the board puts together, adopts, so you're also trying to make sure that is fulfilled. As a whole, the responsibility for a board director is to determine long-range mission and goals. Preston Association Board of Directors on an annual basis is very focused on a strategic and long-range plan. Last year, the Board of Directors went through an entire process starting about this time last year that culminated in March of last year to develop the 2016-2020 strategic plan, five-year plan for the Board of Directors and for the organization to follow. So it's a roadmap, very important for the Board to establish with the staff as well as with the committees. Next, the board establishes policies and procedures for the organization to follow. Nothing that I do is without authorization of the board of directors. I'm very limited in what I can do as the CEO for the organization. It is all dictated by policies directed to me by the board of directors, either through resolution or what's spelled out in the deed and the bylaws of the Articles of Incorporation. Hire and evaluate the CEO is another responsibility of the Board of Directors. On an annual basis, the Board provides me with an appraisal for my conduct, how I've done in meeting goals, usually strategic goals for the organization as a whole. If I were to leave the organization, the Board is also responsible for hiring a new CEO. It is the only employee that the Board of Directors is responsible for or reports to. All other employees report either directly to me or to other senior directors that report to me. Board of Directors is going to monitor finances, approve budgets, and set the annual assessment. The board just finished that activity in November of 2015. Uh, after several different budget work sessions, the board will get together, ask questions of staff, build a budget with staff. Staff is responsible for coming to the board with a draft budget. It is never the expectation of staff that that budget is going to stay the way it is. We will definitely have some adjustments to it based on what the board of directors desires are. I'm pleased to say that the 2016-17 budget is solely focused on the association's strategic plan that was adopted by the board earlier in March 2015. So that it is aligned with the strategic plan. There are several areas of focus that the board is interested in, in making sure that we address in the next two years. It is uh, optimizing member experiences, information technology focus, as well as uh, leading sustainable change. So that is the focus of the association for the next two years with several goals that they would like the association to hit on that. As well, the Board of Directors is going to adopt or approve programs and capital projects through the budget development process. So any projects that the Board of Directors undertakes or the association undertakes on the association's common area facilities, whether it's a recreational upgrade, uh, stream restoration, um, lake dredging, pathway recapping, that's approved by the Board of Directors on technically an annual basis on different projects. We're doing something unique in 2016 and 17. We're changing the way we approach our capital projects and coming out with a, a honed plan, a strategic plan that's going to cover a three year period and a new process of the way we look at projects, trying to look at whole facilities as opposed to just replacing the paper towel holders and not looking at whether the sink needs to be replaced at the same time we're trying to make sure that we can do the best for a facility. But any project that the staff undertakes is first approved by the Board of Directors. So these are some of the key responsibilities, the primary responsibilities of Reston Association's Board of Directors. Long-range planning, policy and procedures, evaluating and evaluating hiring the CEO, monitoring finances, budgets, setting the assessment, and approving programs and capital spending through the budget development. 
Individually, Reston Association Board Directors are expected to attend all meetings, special events when we have them, and board retreats. Prepare for board meetings. Something simple, but it's expected the board will take the time to read through the materials so that they're prepared to make these policy decisions, administrative decisions at meetings. Serve as committee members, liaisons to committees, or co-chairs of committees. Offer counsel suggestion and opinion to staff and the rest of the board of directors. Assume leadership roles when called upon. And keep the board and CEO informed of any community concerns. We have a very large community and we can't be everywhere. Staff can't be everywhere. The board can't be everywhere. There might be something happening in the North Point District that we're not aware of. Danielle may hear about it. Or there might be something happening in the Hunters Woods Dogwood District and one of the other districts that we're not aware of until it's brought to our attention. Then we can address it. It might be a minor administrative or, or a maintenance matter, or it might be something more serious, as we have had in the South Lakes District with stream uh, stream restoration and monitoring, where it's going to take a whole board effort or maybe even a community effort to address that matter to get it corrected. Duties and responsibilities continue. Important to note that the Board of Directors elects officers or appoints officers um, for different positions. There's the Board President, there's the Board Vice President, there's the Secretary and the Treasurer. Only two of those positions have to be elected directors, meaning amongst one of those nine individuals that were elected to the board of directors. That is the board president and the board vice president. The board secretary and treasurer don't have to be elected members to the Reston Associ I mean, to the Reston Association board. They do need to be members of Reston Association. So, right now, what the Reston Association board has is all of its officers that are listed up here happen to be elected board directors right now. Two positions, secretary, treasurer, do not have to be elected directors to the board. So the board members are selecting either amongst themselves or if there is someone who makes application, expresses an interest in serving any of the secretary or treasurer position, the board of directors considers that and makes their appointment process. The election of these officers is the only vote that the Board of Directors is going to take by secret ballot for a reason. You've got a group of nine people. If somebody is interested in running for a particular position, you really don't want to embarrass each other, for lack of a better way of putting it, or hurt anybody's feelings if you don't vote for them in particular. So we do that by secret ballot. So that is the only vote that the association is allowed to do by secret ballot. Everything else for the Board of Directors is and open is an open vote. As we mentioned before, the Board of Directors hires the CEO position. I am not a voting member of the Board of Directors, but I am considered an officer of the organization. In carrying out the duties, the Board of Directors does rely on quite a few different groups to help it along the way. There is no way that the Board of Directors could do everything that it does all by itself. We are blessed to have a really phenomenal pool of talent in Reston, in Reston and people who lend their talents to volunteer to make Reston Association happen, like our Board of Directors. This is a volunteer board, and it's amazing to me how much time and dedication that these folks give to us on an annual basis, monthly, daily basis. But the groups that we have that help us, we have board committees. With the exception of one committee, these board committees are comprised of board directors. So we have something called a board operations committee. This committee is responsible for helping to <coughs> set board agendas that the board will take up later in the month. They look at work plans from committees and consider and interview individuals who are interested in being on our committees. Those are the primary responsibilities of the Board Operations Committee. Anything that a board committee does is not set in stone, or lack of a better way of putting it. Anything that a board committee does has to be ratified by the Board of Directors. 
So when the Board Operations Committee sets an agenda for the board meeting, it is required to have that agenda ratified at the beginning of those board meetings. Board, board agendas can't change if, if need be, but the board as a whole has to ratify that. We also have something called a Board Governance Committee, and that committee is responsible for looking at the strategic plan, making sure the strategic plan is being followed. It's responsible for the appraisal process for the CEO. It starts the process, finishes the process with the Board of Directors. It is responsible for committees, not necessarily work plan, but the evaluation of committees, making sure committees are doing what they need to be doing. It looks at whether new committees need to be formed or merged or what have you. It also looks at board development. Uh, educational processes, orientation sessions, skill building for the board of directors itself, and it looks at mentoring board directors who want to go into different positions. Those are some of the, some of the things that the board governance committee does. We also have something called the legal committee. The legal committee is an adjudication body of the Reston Association. It is the second to last stop uh, that, the, that a, an owner of property would go to in trying to mitigate any assessment issues or property covenants violations that, that we might have. The legal committee works very hard to work with members to bring their property up to, into a pleasing manner and make sure that people do take the time to pay assessments. Any decisions of the legal committee go directly to the board of directors for ratification. Yes. Um, the the legal committee basically it's, it's before uh, before you go to the county before going to the county before before it goes to court correct correct and even even if the legal committee makes a decision to do something it still has to go to the board of directors <coughs> for approval uh, to to ratify to go to court the board has to say yes we want to file suit or pursue a particular action. Yeah. We, uh, I am very pleased to say that we work really hard not to have cases come before the legal committee. In fact, um, I'm very proud of my staff because as, and Ellen and I just, and, and even I just came from a legal committee meeting where we used to have anywhere from uh, 20 to 30 cases in a month. We're beginning to get it down to just a couple to where we don't need to have a meeting every month because staff are working very hard with our members to uh, make sure their properties are being maintained properly or they make their assessment payments or what have you. Our goal is to have a good relationship with our members and to work with them because we're all here for the same purpose, for the sense of community. So. The last committee that we have as a board committee is called the Fiscal Committee. This is the only committee that includes outside individuals outside of the board of directors. So we have two board directors who typically serve on the, uh, I apologize, let me, let me back up. We have at least one board director that serves on the committee and the treasurer. Our treasurer happens to also be a board director. That's why I went to the number two with the, uh, with the directors there. The rest of the members of that fiscal committee are individuals with financial expertise in the community. That they're looking at uh, budget proposals, they're looking at preparing for audit, they're looking at investment plans, different things like that is what that fiscal committee, providing advice and counsel to the board of directors on things. So a very important committee. Again, any decisions of that group, they're also looking uh, regularly at our financial statements and, and uh, all of that. But uh, very important committee to have there. Next, we have a set of board advisory committees. These committees are set up to look at specialized subjects for the board of directors of import to the organization or the community at the time. Typically, these committees are reviewed annually, making sure that we're still in need of them. It's not just a, a single task or a special committee. For instance, we have a community, we have, right now we have five done a lot of reorganizing over the past couple of years. We have a community engagement advisory committee focusing on how we interact with our members, the communications that go out with them, uh, the regular engagement opportunities from 
uh, having people in the community to welcome new members, to setting up workshops, to work with people to make updates to homes, to having home expos, to community surveys, to what information do we have on our website and our publications. The Environmental Advisory Committee is very focused on Reston Association common area, how it's maintained, making sure it is maintained in a good state, in a sustainable state. And that committee is very is beginning to have a stronger focus on things that are outside of Reston Association common area. Very interested in development, redevelopment, and making sure that that happens in um, a reasonable, rational manner that is preserving our environment, natural areas, streams, lakes, ponds, and that we increase our green space wherever we can. And as well as they do several different programs for the association, Arbor Day and things like that, so they help us with that. The Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee is looking at um, what types of facilities and programs the association should have on a long-term basis. What new things do we want to have in place from programming or from uh, a facility standpoint? They're in the process right now of looking at a study that they just received back from George Mason University, and they'll be coming to the board of directors with recommendations on how to implement what the study recommendations said, and what should be taken up first, or steps should be taken up. So that'll be coming up in the month of February. So very important, because we are a recreation-heavy uh, community both passive and active. So there's a big focus on with that committee. We have a 55 plus that is looking at programming and services for our older population in the rest of the community, those who are 55 plus and over. They have a very rich program of opportunities, not just events that they have, but they're also beginning to focus on aging in place and how we can best accommodate that for Reston Association members who choose not to leave the community on retirement. They want to stay here, so how best we can help them. So that's been a very interesting community, to, uh, a committee to see um, grow over the past uh, few years and changing of its mission and focus from events based to um, how can we help people stay and maintain their homes and get the services that they need. Last is a brand new committee called the Multimodal Transportation Advisory Committee. It is focused on all modes of transportation within Reston. Whether you're on a sidewalk, a pathway, you're on a bike, you're on a bus, you're on in your car, or you're in metro. So they're making sure that infrastructure, all the infrastructure that we need to have in place is in place and that we can advocate for that. Very important committee that has just been put in place that helps the Board of Directors, all of these groups advise the Board of Directors, provide policy guidance to them. Next, we have the Covenants Committee and the Design Review Board. The difference between these two, the Covenants Committee is focused on existing property, whether it's rest and association property itself, common area, recreation facilities, or it's an individual's home, and whether that home is being maintained, or that property is being maintained. Is the fence falling over? Is a door coming off its hinges? Is a roof caving in? Uh, or is a pathway not well maintained? Whatever the case might be, if, if we're not able to work with Reston Association staff to get the property fixed, it's going to end up with the Covenants Committee who's also going to try very hard to work with that homeowner to make sure that property owner to make sure the property is well maintained. And then if for any reason the Covenants Committee is not successful, that's when I'm going to go back to the Legal Committee, that's when it'll go to the Legal Committee. Ah. So there are, there are several different channels that it can go through. As I mentioned before, we work, try very hard for it not to get to, through all those channels. We want, to, we want to work with homeowners. So existing property is what you should think of when you think of the Covenants Committee. The Design Review Board is looking at existing property or new property where you're making an enhancement to a property. You're adding a fence that was never there before. You're putting in a brand new multi-use, multi-mixed-use uh, multi, uh, development that has never been there before. It can go from changing a door color all the way to adding a brand new building with 
with uh, commercial on the bottom and residential on the top. It's a wide variety. The difference between the Covenants Committee and the Design Review Board are, are, is, is that. So we're looking at design on one, use maintenance of existing property on the other. Both groups are appointed by the Board of Directors. The Design Review Board is an independent body, decision-making body from Reston Association Board of Directors. The only way that the Reston Association Board of Directors is going to look at a decision of the Design Review Board is if the Design Review Board is split in a decision. The Design Review Board is a nine-member board. It would be hard to have a split decision unless someone is missing on the Design Review Board one night. <laughs> we have a vote of four to four. For sure. That's when it would come to the RA Board. Right, so, and, and in my history, never had a decision of the DRB come before the RA board for, for a decision. Separate body, very unusual. Typically community associations are set up where the board of directors look at design issues. That Reston Association was set up completely differently. Two separate, one architect, kind of architectural review versus a board of directors looking at policy, governance uh, issues. But the board of directors does a point the Design Review Board, the Board of Directors, is also responsible for approving new design guidelines. So if the DRB comes up with a design guideline for trash receptacles, what they, what they should look like, how far off the ground they should be, what color they are, that still has to go to the Board of Directors for approval. And we go through a whole public hearing process. The responsibility of the Reston Association and the Board of Directors is responsible for enforcing decisions of the Design Review Board and of the Covenants Committee. That's, that, is the, that is the tie back in. Even though the Design Review Board makes a decision, it is the responsibility of the RA Board and ultimately the staff to enforce that decision. So that is the, that is the difference between, between the groups and the relationship of the different groups there. Time commitment, probably the most important thing to know. And I've got a couple of directors here who can say, no, you got it wrong. The time, <laughs> <laughs> the time, I hate to say that. Sorry. <laughs> right, right, I know. I, I, tr I am still in awe, and one of the reasons that drives me every day is the amount of time that our board of directors puts into it, that volunteers put into making rest and run. It is amazing to me. It energizes me that there are so many people. I was, I was talking with someone earlier today that a community association is a grassroots democracy. It is of the people, by the people, for the people. And it's amazing to me to see that and the time and dedication. It is a lot of time. This is a very large community. It is the largest community association in the Commonwealth of Virginia in Fairfax County, in the Hunter Mill District for Fairfax County. And it's amazing to me the time that our volunteers put in. It's about 20 hours per month with another five to 10 hours in the month to go to committee meetings or work with members. I'm sure I'm off on that. I'm sure it's probably much more than that in the time and dedication that our board puts in. Depending on your officer position as well, that number can grow in, in terms of amount of time put in. Technically, you could put in as much time or as little time as you want on the board of directors. It depends on, your, on what you're interested in accomplishing when you're sitting on the board. Am I, do I have that right, wrong? Well, you can't put little, I mean, you really need to be, it's at least 18 hours a month meetings, I would say, is your minimum. But would you, what would you say your minimum? So two, six hour meetings Did I get plus, 20 about, right? I'd say that that's pretty close to minimum. About the minimum. minimum. Yeah. yeah. So, a lot of time. So I don't, I don't want to fool anybody by saying this is easy. It's, there's, a, there's a lot to do, a lot to consider, a lot of preparation, a lot of face-to-face -face meeting time. The decisions of rest and association are made in a meeting not electronically, uh, through email. It's done in public, on YouTube. Everybody can see it. All of the 
Reston Association meetings that I mentioned with the committees are open to the public. The members can come in and ask questions. So in, to summarize and confirm what our understanding, at a minimum it will be about 30 hours face-to-face -face time, basically. Basically. Okay. About, about 30 hours a month. Good to know because I'm also on a commission that has counted. Okay. Okay. It is important, Ed, so just the realistic uh, of, the, of the time on that. One of the things is, it's not just serving on the board. Board directors are also assigned to a committee or two or three. It depends on your availability and what you have time to do. Who assigned them, please? The board decides amongst itself who goes where. And that's something new. That is something that the board took up this year. It used to be that the board president made the decision as to who would go on what committee. Instead, and I, to Ellen, Ellen's credit, and uh, her predecessor, Ken Knieven, uh, a decision was made to let's open this up and let's have an open discussion as to who should sit on what committee. Because we want to hit people's interests, right? And if somebody, if two people want the same thing, let them duke it out, you know, right? <laughs> let them come, let them, let them figure like out who does mission. what. <laughs> right, right. So that, that's how those decisions are made. Uh, and we make sure that you have ample opportunity to take a look at the different committee descriptions. You know, if you're interested in running for the board, I strongly encourage you not only to attend board meetings, but go and check out some of the committee meetings as well. See what's going on so that you can see uh, you know, what they're talking about, what your interests are. You might be very interested in a 55 plus committee or maybe the multimodal, whatever your level of interest is, parks and recreation, whatever. Go see what they're talking about. And when you're assigned to a committee, it's not necessarily to do work on that committee for an advisory committee. You serve as a liaison. A board member would serve as a line of communication between the committee and the rest of the board of directors, making sure the committee is sticking to its work plan. If there's anything that a committee needs help on advocating for, that's the intent of that board director for an advisory committee. Board committee is a different matter. Board committee, you are working, you are serving uh, in, in a capacity to try and make decisions that the board will eventually look at. Board meetings. Starting in 2016, we'll be starting at 6.30 p.m. And they are held the fourth Thursday of every month, except the month of April, which is an election month. We typically don't have a regular board meeting in the month of April. We do have a shorter, what we call initial meeting of the board of directors, uh, the Wednesday after the annual meeting, which I believe is the 13th of April this year. During that meeting is an election of officers at that time. And typically we receive the annual audit report. I think we might be receiving the report a, a month or two later this year. We're changing our processes a little bit there. Uh, in the month of November and December, the meetings are held a little earlier in the month, probably the third Thursday as opposed to the fourth, so we can accommodate different holidays. In the month of August, we get everybody off. We did not do that in the month of August this past year. Instead, we were in several different budget work sessions, which can happen, which, which can happen. And so that's, uh, we tried to give everybody off. But it's a typical vacation month. But you can set calendar for Thursday of every month on all of, the, all of the other months. So again, three seats, at-large seat, um, Lake Antall Oaks, North Point District seat, have to be a resident, if you're interested in one of the district seats, have to be a resident of that district. Um, just a quick question, on the ballot, for example, for the at large seat, obviously there will be people who will be running that's not at the information session. Right. So, how do we know how many people will be running? So, good, you know what? I'm, I'm sorry. No, 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 it's an excellent question. It's an excellent question. I was like, you know. No, it's a good one. And, you know, bear with me just a second because I'm going to get to that. I'll get to that for you. I'm going to get that for you. So, important dates for you to know for the election for the election for 2016. 
first one is the filing date, 5 p.m. sharp, on January the 29th, Friday, January the 29th, is when all of your forms are due. Two forms, a candidacy form, uh, a petition of candidacy, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a minute, as well as a statement of candidacy. On Monday, February the 1st, at 6 o'clock, the Elections Committee is going to meet to look at all of the forms that came in from individuals who said they're interested in running for a slot. During that meeting, the Elections Committee is, is going to be doing some specific tasks, which I'm going to pause for a second and I'll talk more about on the next slide. On Tuesday, February the 2nd, at 5.30 p.m., anybody who has put their name in the ring to be a candidate, uh, we have a professional photographer, third-party photographer, that we bring in to come in and take photographs of candidates. It's, a, it's a, an organizational selfish motive to do that. Uh, we want to have a really good photograph of all of our candidates. And when we're putting them on the ballot materials or on the website for people to view. So that's, that, that was, that's very important to us. Um, Years past, we've gotten some poor quality photographs that were difficult to use in materials, and we wanted to make sure everyone had an equal opportunity to look fabulous in the election materials. So we've gone ahead and, and hired a professional photographer who I think does a pretty marvelous job uh, in, in doing that. And candidates get to select the photo of their that they prefer that the uh, professional takes for us to use. On Thursday, February the 4th at 7 o'clock is when, when we'll have all of the certified candidates meet with the Elections Committee and learn next steps on the elections process. Things during that meeting that will be covered will be um, everything from where your position is on the ballot, depending on how many uh, people run for a particular seat, to answer your question. We're not going to know how many candidates we have and who they are until the Elections Committee has completed its certification process on February 1st. I can tell you right now, and for the viewing audience, that anybody who files information about who has filed will not come out of this office until the Elections Committee has completed its process. We often get calls from people saying, who made application? We're not going to say anything because there are no valid candidates until the elections committee is ready to release that information. If a candidate wants to say, hey, I'm running, that's fine. But we're very careful about who we say is running because it's not for Reston Association staff to say. It's up to the elections committee to make that determination once those candidates have been validated. So we, we don't know to answer your question until the elections committee has received everything. I can tell you that in years past, uh, once uh, the list is known and we've gotten to that elections orientation session, we have had people say, hmm, I don't think I want to do this. And we do have a time certain where we say we need to know by XYZ time frame. And it's probably, if that's on Thursday, it's probably going to be first thing in the morning on Friday or no later than Friday afternoon because if you choose not to run, we don't want to put you on the ballot. We don't want to put you on the ballot. We don't want to confuse members. So the, the best thing to do is to take the name off if you've chosen not to do that. Again, so you'll be determining your position on the ballot. That is done by lot. You'll be drawing a number as to where you sit on the ballot. For an at-large election, uh, when you saw that map, everyone in Reston will have the opportunity to vote on that race, on that at-large race. Right. For Lake Ann Tall Oaks, anybody who lives in the Lake Ann Tall Oaks area will get to see the Lake Ann Tall Oaks candidates and the at-large candidates. Anybody in North Point is going to see the North Point candidate and the at-large. South Lakes District, Hunters Woods Dogwood District are only going to see the at-large candidates. Does that make sense? Because those are the only races that those folks are eligible to vote in. Okay, on that. 
The other thing that we do at this information session, the orientation, is make sure that all of the candidates have a copy of the member database. Typically what we do, what the Elections Committee has asked, is that anybody running for at large gets the entire membership database because you're looking for votes from all of those candidates, right? <laughs> right, exactly. For North Point, as an example, uh, candidates for the North Point district position are only going to get the voting list or the membership voting list for that district. Same thing for Lake Ann Tall Oaks. We were having races in South Lakes and Hunterswood Stockwood district. They would only get they would only get the membership list, what we call the voting list for those. So that is something that we do. We try to do that for people who are running so that they have an opportunity to know where the votes are and go and have conversations with people, like walking door to door, sometimes people do mailers, whatever they choose to do in order to get the word out. That is how we handle that. We want to make sure everybody has that information. Yes, sir. Does, does that list contain email addresses? It does not. And we are not permitted to do that unless we have the written permission from uh, the member yeah, on that. So it is typically what that, is, that list will show is um, the address. I'm looking at Sabrina because it's, it's, it's the address. It property is ID. the property ID. And the voter yeah, the type. type. And the voter type is important because uh, when we say Reston Association members, we mean people who either own residential property or who are residents of the community. And there's a very special distinction there. I'm going to use myself as an example. I own property and I live in that same property that I own. I'm considered an owner occupant. So the ballot that I receive during the election will have a weighted vote of two because I'm the owner and I'm the occupant. In accordance with our governing documents, that each of those membership types gets an opportunity to vote. So it's a weighted ballot. If I were to own a property in Reston but live in Florida, I will get a ballot in Florida and my tenant, who's also a member and gets to vote, will get a ballot at the, at the property that I own in Reston. We each have a weight of one, counts for one. See then when, but see what the difference on that. Okay. Just a quick follow-up. Mm -hmm. For the voters in the past, what's the percentage of owner occupancy who voted? I don't have a specific <laughs> chart. For it. No, I, I, I'm going to I'm going to give you a very general. Yeah, I'm going to give you a very generalized answer. In my experience, we have a greater percentage of owner occupants that vote as opposed to abs what we call absentee, living in a different, living outside of. We have also a fairly good percentage of individuals who own multiple properties and live in Reston. So for an example, you could have a you could have an individual that owns three properties, one of which they live in, the other two they're renting out. There's a high there's a high chance that that individual is going to vote all three properties. Ah, okay. Thank you. Yeah, on that. Um, the percentage of somebody who lives outside of the community is not as high that they're going to return their ballot, but their tenant may. Mm -hmm. But their tenant may. I strongly encourage anybody who runs for the board of directors not to forget the apartments. Those are members of the association. They have a vote. So I encourage people to walk around, let them know, you know, it's a great way to get to know people in the community. Sometimes those folks don't even know that they have that right. The Elections Committee works very hard to make sure that folks know that they have the opportunity to vote. Two ways that people can vote, either by paper or by electronic ballot. Uh, we have uh, about 1,300 folks who have chosen not to receive paper. They only want to receive the electronic ballot. We give everybody who receives a paper ballot the opportunity to vote on online 
and choose to only receive electronic information as well. And that percentage continues to grow, which is, which is really great. So I want to go back to the candidacy forms. So at that February 1st meeting, the Elections Committee has a very, very singular focus on looking at the candidacy forms. There is a, a, uh, there is a statement of candidacy, and there are a couple of things that need to be done on that form. One is name address, uh, what your goals would be, what your qualifications are. The key on that form is you have 150 words in each of those to describe either the goals or your qualifications. Keeping it crisp is important because this information is going to be printed in the ballot. If we were allowed to, if we allowed people to go for pages, I think a big ballot. So we try to keep it tight and we try to make it fair on that. What they're going to do with that initial piece is also try to find out whether or not you are, in fact, a Reston Association member and you're a member possibly of the district race that you're running if you choose to run for a district. Also going to be looking whether or not you're a member in good standing. In good standing means, I'm going to go to that, oops, apologize, means that you reside in a property within Reston, as I mentioned before. You don't have any unpaid fees, whether assessment or what we call covenants or notice of violation fees, and or you don't have a violation with Reston Association of some type or sort. That can be anywhere from a property violation, you have design violations where you put in really big pink flamingo on the top of your house or something like that. Or, or you have a fence that's falling over and you're in the middle of working on that either with the covenants committee legal, or legal committee is really where it is. Or you have an unpaid assessment fee. We do encourage anybody who is running for the board of directors to please make your annual assessment payment prior to filing. Either pay the entire amount or at least pay the installment fee. Because it is considered to be you're to be not a member in good standing if you haven't at least made that assessment payment. Because at the time of the election begins, technically the assessment is due on January the first. We do not incur we don't in have members incur late fees until March 1st, being generous with time there. But it is important to make sure that you make that assessment payment. Going back to the petition of candidacy, you're required to get at least 25 signatures of different property owners, for lack of a better way of putting it, different households. So, if you were to come to my house and say, Kate, can you sign my candidacy form? I'd say, sure. You cannot then turn to my husband, who lives with me, and say, can you sign two? And count that as two. One of those is going to be crossed out, because it's from the same household. You want different households. Strongly encourage you to get more than 25 signatures. I can guarantee that in some way, shape, or form, you're going to inadvertently get somebody to sign your form who's either not in your district, <coughs> or is in town center, or doesn't even live in Reston. I consider town no, center part of Reston. I know. I know. It's one Reston, though, right? Yeah. It's one Reston. Absolutely. So, yeah. Right, one yeah, Reston. And <laughs> if I'm a renter, can I sign the position? Yes. Or must I be a property owner? No, you can sign. Yes. Okay. Yes. As long as you're a member of the Reston okay. Association. Okay. What, what we are doing. The elections committee has asked staff to do is to check to see if the property is in fact a rest and association okay. property and where it's located. So as long as it's a dues paying address. Correct. So okay. you could go if you, if you happen to live in a condo, you could just mm -hmm. correct. They're happening. It's very important that the information is clearly delineated mm -hmm. in that form because if there is a question, we will pick up the phone and call the signature right. to say we need to validate something. Mm -hmm. We couldn't do you are you in this property. Mm -hmm. It's a rare occasion when we're getting close. If somebody's got 24 good signatures and we've got two that are questionable, we're going to take the time to talk to the question, well, did you sign this? Are you X, Y, and Z? Can you give us some proof? We 
want to, the last thing we want to do is have to send you back out to the street to get more signatures. Always get more than 25. Yes, sir. Uh, you've just mentioned something about the dues paying member. The renter doesn't pay dues. You're correct. You're absolutely correct. The dues paying property. Yes. Property. Yeah. Yeah. Property. property. Yeah. Property. Yeah. 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 But it's, so it's a, it's a member of the association. Did I miss anything yet? Nope. Okay. Good. I just want to make sure I got that. Yes. Yeah, Come on. Get it out. Let's go. Let's go. Get it out. That's okay. Get it out. So, so that's what the elections committee will be doing on February the first. They will notify all candidates, uh, valid valid candidates, uh, that they've been validated. If for any reason there is a problem with a candidate's information, the elections committee does allow a a period of time, short period of time, it's usually less than 24 hours, for a candidate to make a correction to the information. Either get the other signature, make an assessment payment, sign a form, whatever the case might be. There is, but, and that is, uh, that's one of the reasons why you won't learn who the candidates are until the elections committee is ready to release it. The last thing that we want to do is release a partial list and embarrass anyone, right? So that's why we hold on to that information. They've got, a, they've got a fantastic system that they put in place. Where to find information about the board of directors in the election process? Our website is a wealth of information. The most important place that you can go for information on our website about the board of directors <coughs> is on, if you go to the top of the page, about resident association, or about resident is what it says, and click on the governance section. That's where you want to go. In the governance section, you will find a section just for the board of directors. Again, lots of information in that section. We have an overview about the board. We have uh, information about each individual director on the board. But more importantly, we have meeting agenda packets. That's where you're going to find the current year's, this whole year's information about different about past board meetings or upcoming board meetings in there you'll be able to look at all of the meeting materials the meeting minutes as well as a link to a youtube on the board of directors meetings you can see the board in action you can take a look at what's going on our board meetings are live streamed uh, during the meeting so the last meeting was on december the 17th sorry December 17th, it's getting November, December mixed up. December the 17th, that was broadcast live. It is then posted immediately on this page. So all information is available to our members. I encourage you strongly to look at that information. Um, there, it gives you an idea of what the board's been taking up, the matters of interest to them. We also have an archive with meeting minutes and agenda packets in it, and there's an ability for members to register to speak at a board of directors meeting. So they can sign up ahead of time instead of just waiting to come to the board. So if there's a particular interest, issue of interest to a member, they can sign up a few days ahead of time before a meeting starts. So it is a first come, first serve basis on that. Also under that section is the association strategic plan. And one of the things that I will hand out to you before you all leave is we have a copy of that strategic plan. I mentioned it earlier this evening. It's the 2016-2020 plan. But it's also available on the association's website. We also have a section on management and finance and the budget development process. Also a good place to go. There's lots of information on there about the uh, whole process. The board of directors just finished last year as well as the final budget itself. So that's the best place to go for that. We also have all of our financial statements under the same section uh, for management and finance. So that's there for you to take a look at, as well as the audit reports. Last but not least is the board elections section, still under governance. It is all under that one heading. All of the information that you can find about this year's election will be there 2016. Contact information for the Elections Committee, as well as results of past elections are on there. 
I also have candidacy, hard copy candidacy forms tonight. Those forms can be downloaded though from the association's website.